Hello, 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 everyone. I'm going to give you all a chance to come on. I'm excited to be on tonight. I am a little bit late, right? Um, I had a few meetings this evening, but I'm excited to be with you all as I go live tonight just to have a brief chat, a quick chat. So um, I'm giving everybody a chance to come on. As you are coming on, tell me where you are coming from. And as you guys are uh, kind of populating and hopping onto the live, I want to introduce myself. My name is Pastor Rhonda or Coach Rhonda or Mama Rhonda or I mean, I go by a lot of different names, but I am a life coach, a minister. I'm one of the pastors at my church. I am um, a lover of Jesus. I own a business called RSB Coaching, where we help you grow and develop and become an heir, right? Our desire is to help you grow and mature in your understanding of the word and your understanding of your identity and who God has called you to be. So I am so excited to be on. I am so simple, y'all. When I say simple, I am, I love to keep things simple. Um, I feel like sometimes in the world with so much information and so much, um, so many opinions, my heart, my desire is to keep things as simple and as plain as possible so that it is tangible. But everything that I do is biblically based, right? And so tonight, I want to just talk to you guys about why I love being a son, right? And when I say being a son, I'm talking about being a child of God. Um, there has an, um, there has been over the years this uh, emergence, so to speak, of the understanding of being joint heirs with Jesus or being a son, sonship, right? That's when you know God as your father, you know that you belong, you know that uh, you have a family. God puts the lonely in families, right? And so being a part of the kingdom of heaven means that we are sons of God. We are joint heirs with Jesus. Now, in the Western world, we are not as familiar when it comes to kingship or kingdoms, but um, that's something you can actually research, right? But when we talk about being a part of the kingdom of heaven, we're talking about being a part of a, a, a um, governmental system that we have the opportunity to learn to grow we go by different rules we have like the bible is our constitution so we have this whole set of rules that we live by that we um yeah live by that we go by on our daily lives that produce the met what we call the manifestations of the kingdom which is righteousness peace and joy and so one of the reasons i'm just going to hop in of why i love being a son a son of god is because there's a scripture in the word that says that we are adopted into the kingdom of God's dear son. And so if you are somebody uh, who has come from a family where you may not have known your father or your mother, or they may not have been as present, you know, these days we talk about inner healing and there's this emphasis on what our parents didn't do, which honestly, from my, for me, I know Takuma, I'm feeling cute, right? Hey, Jackie. Uh, but for me, when it comes to our parents, our parents, the way that I look at it, our parents did the best that they could. When you become grown, you have a choice, right? So you can choose to heal. You can choose not to heal. You can choose to live. You can choose not to live. And so I think for me, as a, a child of God, uh, being a son, a joint heir with Jesus, yes, it is a spiritual thing, but it's also a natural thing, right? So anytime you feel like, you're alone or you don't have a father or you you don't feel protected because our fathers protect they uh name us what it protect they name us and they protect name and provide right and so god when you know god as your father you know he's a protector you know he's a provider you know that he gives you identity and so even in times where you don't know who you are as we're growing right because as human beings we're gonna grow so as we grow in our identity and who we are as children of god or as people in general as a son i have a blueprint right I hear a lot of times people say, well, there's no uh, blueprint or I didn't grow up with my father, so I don't know how to be a man or I didn't grow up with my father, so I don't necessarily know how a man is supposed to love me. These are things that, according to the world, may be true. But as a son, we have so many examples in scripture 
of how God loves us and what that love should look like, feel like, how that experience is. And even like, if I know for me growing up, one of the things that I struggled with was not feeling protected just because of things that I experienced in my life. But when I learned God as my father, as a son, right? Because being a joint heir with Jesus, accepting Jesus into my life, I had that access to God as my father. I was able to know and, and begin to learn um, that even, just because I don't feel loved at times does not mean that I'm not loved, right? Um, just because I may not feel like I'm protected naturally in my emotions does not mean that God does not protect me. And one of the things as a son, as a child of God, as a, a Christian, a believer, a joint heir with Jesus, I have the assurity and the solid foundation of the word of God that does not change, right? Um, with everything that we do, that we live, that we understand, that we know, it is literally a choice. I saw, um, and I'm going to come back around, but I saw this video um, earlier today where the individual was talking about marriage. And he said um, they were asking him how um, does he find it hard to find love? And he was like, love is a choice, which is absolutely 100% true. Um, I was even studying love uh, this morning and in the scripture, basically love, true love, being love, right? It is making a decision or being persuaded in an area. And so I said all of that to say, when we talk about the word of God and God so loved the world, God made a decision to save us, right? He sent us to Jesus and he made the decision, not because we were going to do everything right, not because we were going to be um, these perfect citizens or these perfect Christians that always loved, always prayed, always kept all of the Ten Commandments, but because he chose to. That was the decision that he committed to where we are concerned, which is what we call covenant. He made a covenant with us. And so I think a lot of times when we when we hear about Christianity or sonship in this big scope, this it makes us feel like, um, now it's extravagant and it's huge and it's big and God loves and it's amazing. Yeah, got it. Uh, it's big and it's love. It's amazing, right? Just the love of God. And I, I want you guys to type really quick, say the love of God, right? The love of God is so amazing. The love of God is so good, but it's so powerful because he chose to do it. Not because somebody made him, but because that was his desire, right? Type in the chat. That was God's desire to love us. It was his decision to love us, right? And so as a believer, as a son, why I love being a son is that I have the opportunity to make that same decision, but even God being our father, him loving us so much, I don't have to pretend. Like the world tells us, say no more pretending, right? The world tells us that um, to be saved and to be a Christian and to to look, you have to look a certain way and you have to act and walk a certain way. But the heart of God said, I already chose to love you, right? So whatever's in you that's not right, that's not in alignment, that's not in agreement, that doesn't necessarily look like him, as you grow in your sonship and as you grow in your identity, as you grow in your understanding of who God is, then you look more like him. Not because you try to make yourself look like him, but because it was a gradual progression. Uh, the word says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so as a son, I have what the word of God, scripture, that is a solid foundation that does not waver, that does not change. Um, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the most powerful thing about Jesus being so consistent, type Jesus is consistent. The thing about Jesus being so consistent is that we have a solid rock to stand on that does not waver, right? And so even the word 
Yeah, even the word of God does not change, but Jesus is the living word. So when we go to the scripture and we go and we read the word, that is our foundation that we can stand on as a son. When we don't know which way to turn, we can stand on our foundation as, as a son. We have precious promises. I'm always talking about the promises of God because we have precious promises that do not change. Not only do we have the promises that he, that the Lord spoke over Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers, right? Not only do we have those promises, if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, it talks about all of the promises. If you obey the voice of the Lord, these are the blessings. We talk about generational blessings. We talk about generational curses all the time, but I am a stickler, right? Uh, okay, we have the generational curses, but how many people know what the generational blessings are within your family? I really believe that if we begin to shift our mindset, begin to shift how we see things and stop focusing so much on what is bad within our bloodline, we can see the beauty in our parents, right? Our physical parents. And they may not have done everything right, but what is on their lives that we have access to, right? And the beautiful thing about being a son is that God gave us the ability to do that, right? He knew who we needed to be, come through, right, for our parents in order for us to be born within this time, because we're needed within this time, but then for whatever that is on their life to be released through us so that we can make a difference in the world. And prime example, my parents are leaders. My biological father, he's a bishop. My mom, principal. Uh, like she's done everything in the school system that you could think of. My um, my other father, he's a entrepreneur, right? So he has his own landscaping business. So like my my family, my parents are leaders, right? This is a generational blessing because in that I have the ability to learn to lead. That thing is in me. And so instead of talking, we're always talking about breaking generational curses. How do we grow the generational blessings? Those things that come naturally within us. And the one thing that I love about being a son a joint heir with Jesus is that when we talk about the kingdom of heaven, it's all about inheritance and generational heritage, those characters and those traits and those things that we inherit, not just from our natural father, but also from our spiritual father that we can take as our own, we can take ownership of, and we can walk out and live in our daily lives. One, one of the things that I love, type in the comments, say inheritance, generational inheritance. We're not talking about generational curses. We're talking about generational inheritance. This is inheritance is our, our image, what we look like, those things that we have received, that we have a right to, right? Inheritance and heritage. These are things that we have a right to, things that not because we did something perfect. And I keep going back to that because this society, um, not just the world at large, but even in the body of Christ at times makes us feel like in order for us to receive from God, we have to do or operate a certain type of way. But we never really get information or insight into how do we access the generational inheritance? How do we access the generational promises? How do we access um, the heritage? This is the heritage of those who uh, trust the Lord, who fear the Lord. How do we access that fear of the Lord that is the key to unlock generational heritage within our bloodline for us to live according to the life that God designed before we were in our mother's womb? And so as a son, we have access to these, this information. We have access to the deep things, right? Um, I think when we talk about being super uh, spiritual, I, because we are triune beings, we are mind, body, spirit, right? We have uh, mind, will, and emotions. We have a soul. We have our spirit. We have our natural body. So we are triune beings. And you cannot have the natural, you, you cannot have spiritual without natural, right? Because we are... Um, one body, we are a representation of Christ. But I, I feel like um, even as human beings, as sons, as those who are in the body of Christ, um, sometimes we see where you either have one or the other to an extreme, right? So sometimes you may, you may be smack dab in the middle, which is what we're trying to do when we talk about being holistic. Um, but you could have one on one side who is super spiritual, right? Where you're living in the clouds and 
uh, you, you uh, faith. It, the faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But you never get to that place of work of faith without works is dead, right? So you're up there in the clouds and you're praying and you're so strong spiritually, but the natural aspect or the physical piece of our lives, right? We don't necessarily grow and groom. And then you have people on the other end where they're very straight. Matter of fact, which I think is a beautiful thing because I'm like that semi to a certain extent. But they negate the pieces that you need for um, natural for for living the spiritual aspect of our lives. But as a son, we have the ability to be able to learn both parts. Right. We have the ability to really learn how to marry all three so that we can give glory to God, both in the spiritual, the natural and in our physical body. And so at being a son, being a son is one of the most um, peaceful, joyous, um, emotionally stable, right? Because when we talk about being a son of God, it produces this internal fortitude, right? So it's the most emotionally stable thing that I, and decision that I've ever made in my life. When I look at people who struggle in their minds, who struggle with their mind, their thoughts go up and down all the time. I, and it, it breaks my heart because as a believer, you really don't have to live in that capacity. Now, I'm not talking about people who have mental diagnosis, right? I'm talking about um, those of us who have not fully embraced and access our kingdom inheritance. Um, it's almost like uh, insurance, right? You can have everything you need within the insurance, but if you've never taken the time to sit down and read it, you don't know what you have. And so I am an advocate for the bride. I'm an advocate for the body of Christ. I am an advocate for uh, those who love Christ. I am an advocate for the bride. Hey, Adriana, thank you so much for joining. I am an advocate for the bride. Say, I, if you are, right? Put in the comments, I am an advocate for the bride because I think sometimes the bride gets a bad rap. The bride of Christ, we are not perfect. I don't know anybody that is. We don't always say the right things. We can be messy sometimes, right? We can not act according to what people feel we should, but we have a blessed assurance we have uh, and we are a part of a kingdom that even in our mess, God still loves us. One of my heart's desires is that for the body, we really learn how to give mercy to one another. Grace and mercy does not mean that we don't have we need we don't need to set boundaries, right? Boundaries are good. Hey, Kate. Hey, Alicia. Thank you guys for hopping on. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't need to set boundaries, but I believe with mercy, if we really and truly showed the mercy of God, I'm really um, um, I like I, I'm very careful in how I phrase certain languaging or conversations because we don't want to make things generalized as if it's always the case. But one of the things that I love about mercy, say, I love mercy. I love mercy. Number one, I need mercy. But one of the things I love about mercy is that mercy, you receive mercy when you, you have been wrong and you deserve a certain type of punishment, but the mercy of God covers it. And I think people don't like mercy. We don't talk about mercy a lot. But I love that as a son of God, we have access to mercy because we are not perfect, y'all. We are not perfect. We don't say the right things. We don't treat people right sometimes. Sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we don't. We're still learning how to love. We're still learning how to be sisters and brothers in Christ. We're still learning how to embrace one another. We're still learning how to walk and live according to the word. And so this is not an excuse. We have to get it together. But I love the fact that as a son of God, we have mercy. And if we would pull on mercy more, then we would see a shift in the body of Christ. This is just my heart because before we are, before we are ready to expose someone for their fallacies, 
let's give them mercy and intercede so that God can have access to their hearts. Because intercession opens up and gives God permission to have access to a person's heart to cause a change, right? And so when we walk and operate in mercy, mercy allows God to pay the rent, like he's already paid the ransom, but mercy allows God to come in and to make the shift and to do what needs to be done to shift the heart. As the body of Christ, I tell you guys, we will never be perfect. We are made perfect through Christ Jesus. And I think sometimes we get it wrong because like you're supposed to be a Christian. You ain't supposed to be doing this. Is this a, a, a um, excuse? where you just don't learn to do right or to live better or to live according to the word or learn how to walk in the fear of the Lord? Absolutely not. But I think one of the things that is missing, one, yeah, mercies are brand new every single morning. One of the things that is missing that we do not hear about is the mercy of God. We are so quick to... Uh, Tell the world how horrible our family is. Tell the world how horrible our, our, our shepherds are. We are so quick to let the world know what our shepherds did or did not do. We are so quick to um, beat our brother and sister down because they did not show us love. We, we are so quick um, to see the wrong or as one of uh, the pastors that came to preach at our church said, he said, we see, we smell the funk, but we are not quick to clean it up. We're quick to smell the funk. We're quick to smell what don't smell right, right? We can tell when something's stinking, but can we tell when God is making something beautiful? Can we tell when God is cleaning something up? Can we tell as a son when God is making that thing that was bad good? Can we tell when God is turning things around for our good or for their good? Can we champion even in the midst of stuff that look crazy? Can we champion even in the midst of, of, of somebody not treating us right? Yeah, it is reflection questions. Can we champion and can we root for the body of Christ even when we see that the, even when the person is doing something that gets you on purpose, can we still champion the body? Can we look at the body of Christ from the perspective of if I broadcast to the world all of my family's dirty laundry, who does not know them, they don't know their heart, they don't know their intentions, they don't know how they feel, they don't, they know nothing about my family, they haven't labored with my family, they haven't been in communion with my family, they don't know the foundation of my family. If I air out all of my family's dirty laundry, how would this affect my brothers and sisters when they go to minister to somebody else? If I air out everything, that my brothers and sisters or or my leaders or my whoever has done how would that affect when i go out to minister am i going to have to spend more time trying to tell the person why i'm not like those people that have been aired out before i can give them christ am i going to like how does this affect us as the bride right which is why i'm a champion for the body of christ i'm a champion for the bride because the bride has spots and wrinkles and so we got to get the spots and wrinkles out and that means sometimes making the decision to love even through the pain yes thank you Takumbo. thank you so much that's why a champion for the bride not because she's perfect that's why i love being a part of the family i love being a part of the kingdom not because the bride is perfect not because the bride does everything right. Not because the bride uh, is, is always white and spotless. But because Jesus loved the bride enough to die. So if he loved the bride enough to die, who am I to try to act like the bride has no value? Doesn't make sense. Does not make sense. Yes, type in the, type in the chat. The bride has value. The bride has value. Your family has value. And if you don't know, right, if you're not a part of this family, if you're not a part of the kingdom, if you're not a joint heir yet, I promise you, you can be. It's so simple, right? If you ask Jesus into your heart, 
ask him and give him permission to be the Lord of your life. Repent, turn away, right? From your, your sin, not be perfect. But say, Lord, I, I want, I'm making a commitment to do this thing right. I'm making a commitment to do, um, to love you. I'm making a commitment to give you my life and say, hey, whatever you want to do with it, help me, right? I'm making a commitment to partner with you in my life. Come into my heart, be the Lord of my life. You're a brother, right? You're a sister. Now you're a part of the kingdom. Now you're a part of this family. And everything that I talked about tonight, you have access to. Everything I talked about. The minute you say, yeah, come into my heart, you literally have a full-grown Jesus living inside of you. Whole full-grown Jesus. In the inside, where he helps you walk out, live out, every single area of your life and gives you victory over every situation that you may face. That's why I love being a son. That's why I love being a son. Type in the chat. I love being a son. I love being a son. You can put, I love being a daughter too, if it makes you feel better, but you are a part of the kingdom. You are a part of the bride. You are a representation of the bride of Christ in the earth. And that's a beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful thing. So let me see if I can go and look at some of you guys' comments. Yes, I love being a bride. You do. Yes, Jack, you have a full-grown Jesus inside of you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kate, for being on. Thank you, Alicia, for being on. And you are an advocate for the bride. Absolutely. Thank you, Takumbo. And it is so true. These are reflection questions because I feel like sometimes we don't sit to reflect. Life, this life is so full of responses and there's so much information that we're, we are consumers. So we consume so much and we feel like if we're not consuming, if we're not consuming, then we're wasting time. If we're not consuming, then there's something that we're missing. But sometimes we just need to stop and reflect. And we got to really think about how our actions and how what we do, even how we love, how we respond to one another, how we embrace one another. How does that affect us? Right. I can remember being young. Your mom like, listen, you're not going to have me out here looking crazy. <laughs> right. That's why the, my, your, your parents discipline you, all of that. Right. Um, but it's because they saw the big picture. They they understood the name. They understood the lineage. They understood the heritage. They understood the inheritance. They understood that even our actions as a young child is a reflection of the heart of our, our name. Our name, in essence, is the way that we carry ourselves reflects the identity of our name. So that's why I, I know my parents disciplined us because it's like, hold on. We don't act like that. We don't do that, you know, and I, 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 my heart is that we get back to that place that we really begin to reflect and get back to that place where I know, right, Takumbo, that's the evangelist in me. Come on to Jesus. He loves you, man. <laughs> but my heart is that we get back to that place where we really and truly stop trying to be and just allow God to trans to build us into becoming who he designed us to be because it really ain't that deep y'all i used to say that back in the day breathe i would tell my clients breathe it is not that deep everything you need is already in you when the lord put you in you in in your mother's womb he packaged you with everything that you need either you have it now and you don't know it or you have it you might need to grow it or it could be something that there's a time release on it that once you hit a certain thing or hit a certain stage what you need will come open but either way the lord is giving you everything that you need yeah come on now tight breathe it's not that deep it's really not that deep i think a lot of things that we have this pressure that we put on ourselves it's so unnecessary because god is good he doesn't change Anything you don't know, you can go to the word. I remember talking to this dude when he was like, yeah, if I lose my keys, the Bible is not going to tell me, hey, go find your keys in such and such. So why y'all say that everything you need is in the word? The Bible may not say, hey, go find your keys, but it does say that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. And the truth is, you're trying to find your keys. 
and you don't know where they are. So Holy Spirit, lead and guide me to where my keys are. He going to truly show you where it is, right? That's not a stretch, I don't think. But um, but yeah, so that was that that's that's why I love being a son. I love the body. In all of its everything, I love the body. I love the bride. And I believe the bride is in one of the best places of her life. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what people are saying. I don't care what it seems like. The bride is in a good place and we are coming we are shining brighter and brighter as the time goes by. Yep, I know that's right, Jackie. That's so true. She, Jackie said, I've lost things that asked Holy Spirit to help me. And indeed, he did and will. Absolutely, because his word is true. His word is true. He does not lie. He's going to lead and guide you. Lord, I don't know where so-and-so is. Show me, Holy Spirit. That's what partnering with the Lord looks like. So if nobody has any questions or comments, or anything of that nature. I just want to say, yeah, keys. Come on, come on, Takumo. Keys. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you guys for spending some time with me tonight. I will be back on next Tuesday. I was a little late today because I did have a meeting, but um, the goal is Tuesdays at nine, regardless, I'll be um, going live on Tuesday. So I thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being on. Where can we follow you? Yes. So you can follow me on Facebook, Coach RSB. On Instagram, same thing, Coach RSB. You can, I have a YouTube uh, channel. So Rhonda S. Barnes, that's my YouTube channel. Um, my website is www.rondasbarnes.org. We'll put all of that in the comments. Um, yeah, I actually have some courses that I'm doing now as well. I do coaching, but I have a free course that I actually did with Takumbo about um, the power of discipline. That's free. It's on my website. You can go to my website. Uh, thank you, Jacoya and Jacqueline, for putting it in the comments. Go to my website, look around. Um, you can get the free course there. It's under Raining with Coach Rhonda or Raining with Pastor Rhonda. So you can go to my website, get the free course, watch that. Hopefully you'll be blessed. If you're interested in anything else, you can always reach out to me. Um, you can also message me, right? Send me a message. I love to talk. Um, but thank you guys. Thank you for being on and spending some time with me tonight. And I will talk to you all really soon. Good night. <laughs>